Hey YouTube, Dustin Ryder here. Welcome to my review for Machine Sentai Kara Major episode 14. So another solid episode in the introduction arcs of Kara May Silver. This one, we start off with him looking for a treasure, and while he's there, Juru decides to join him. And there's actually a couple funny moments in this episode that made me laugh, and this is one of them where he's like looking at his book, like, okay, I gotta find the dragon or whatever, and then Juru shows up and like, there's a dragon? But then he finds a signal and he's digging through the wall and it turns out to be a Karame stone. And there's a funny moment too where Drew's like, I wanted to dig and he's got like a little shovel. Uh, but they, he finds a Karame stone, a little one, and he kind of dismisses it because he thinks it's like small and useless and also it wasn't what he was looking for. And then we have a monster of the week attacking, which leads to another funny moment immediately where they're like at a tunnel and they're like, oh my god, it's the, it's the jokey train. And then it's just a train monster. And Silver shows up and he tries to fight it, but he like has a plan that ends up getting yellow hurt and it's kind of playing into the whole he doesn't work well with others bit and then the train gets to keep going and achieve its goal. After that they're trying to figure out what, well first of all like there's a scene where Garz is like oh good that's still the way you're operator or whatever which is a foreshadowing for later because he's noticed that like Silver got in the way because he's not good at working with others and he's just kind of all about like oh you know I work better by myself and then they're at a sauna because they're huge Kiva fans and they love all the bath scenes in Kiva so they're reenacting that but Juru and Silver are in the bath while the other rangers are out front trying to figure out like what this monster of the week is doing and when right when they're doing that then all of a sudden the train runs through this sauna and like collapses it. This poor lady's business. And Drew's like mad, or not Drew, a Silver's like mad because he's like, oh, you ruined my bath and he's got ready to morph. But then he realizes he took his changer off for the bath and it's lost. And so the other rangers leave to go fight and Silver's stuck looking through the rubble. He's like, you know what? I thought I didn't need anybody because I can handle situations on my own. But when I have to do boring physical labor, it would just be nice to have friends. So then Juru shows up with his inspiration for this little carame stone and turns it into Duston, which is like a garbage truck thing in its vehicle form, and starts helping clean the rubble up. And then even when they're in the battle, Yellow calls in the Shovel Yellow Corpse to help. And then, you know, he's like, oh, I realize what friendship means now is helping with boring tasks. So, like, all of them clean up the debris so he can get his changer, and then he arrives on the team and kind of realizes, you know, I don't have to do things by myself, like, I can accept help. That's basically the moral of the episode. And you find out it kind of started via a flashback. Well, not, like, because he had a flashback it started, but you find out how it started via the flashback of when he was, like, moving a chair with his sister Brawhead, and then Garza comes in and he's like, look, you don't have to appease people that are trash at their job when you can just do it by yourself. You're always better by yourself. Just anti-Sentai message 2020. And then it shows Juru, like, moving the chair on his own. And then he's like, oh, Garza, you were tricking me the whole time. He's like, aha, that's right. That's the only bit I didn't like. Like, in one way, like, it makes sense that Garza would want to sabotage him, but at the same time, Garza legit believing, like, you don't, can only do things by yourself or you don't need other people would make sense, and it seems weird. Like, I guess Garza was just always evil, because I assumed Garza was at least balanced a little bit before he turned, and that he had some sort of caring for his family, although it was an adoptive family. I don't know, I'm just arguing with myself. My point is, is I don't think it needed to be, like, that was sabotaging him because it's not like at the time he knew there was going to be other Kara Majors or something. I think it would have just made more sense for him. It would have been more interesting, I guess, to me, for him to be following advice from his uncle, which his uncle actually believed because he's a villain. But regardless, they all then team up and we get the team roll call and we get to see how Kara May Silver adds into it because they have a very unique pose roll call, as we all know. And then they use teamwork to defeat him, although it was very unnecessary, where, like, Silver's holding him down and the way they defeated the monster was stopping him from completing his mission, which is to complete this darkness circle, was to, like, take this rubble from the rubble they cleaned up and then spike it into like his train hole and that sounded weird but like I get the whole teamwork aspect but honestly all they needed was one guy holding him and one guy smashing it in that sounded like instead they like spiked it like a, a volleyball or a kickball all around and that was like a good example of my philosophy is right in between the teamwork thing and this week's episode is that like yeah silver needed other people but sometimes Sentai and Power Rangers teamwork is like oh my god you're absolutely useless unless you have five people doing one job it's like no sometimes you only need like a few people like you, some, you just don't need that many people doing one job but regardless they stop him 
And then there's some unexpected stuff that happens in the mecha battle in that Garza lends the monster of the week Jokey so that he can have like a train themed tr dinosaur, but then you get the actual another big monster So you have these two train monsters are gonna be fighting. Terra Majin shows up and I was like, okay There's only a couple minutes left in this episode. I don't think they're gonna introduce Gigant Driller. Who knows? They spent an awful lot of time on dust on but then out of nowhere They're like, okay silver you use shiny and then we'll use the King Express and it was surprising to me like I didn't think that they were gonna debut the mecha this week I because of, like I said the time was running out, but he ended up using the Jokey combined mecha Which was really surprising and it was kind of cool too because something I said I appreciated about this series is I like that They haven't been rushing debuts like even though now we're out of sync because of the delay with the toys I really like that they're taking their time so many other sometimes are like here's everything you have to buy the toys oh My god now they have to be on screen and shelves at the same time and I like that we had this where he actually used the other secondary mecha to fight it was kind of a nice spin on them kicking garza out which i've mentioned before kind of gets old because it wasn't garza they were kicking out so that was kind of cool i like that we didn't debut that but he was also able to use this other mecha and be involved in the battle and then they have a hard time defeating him until juru gets inspiration based on watching the the sauna shop owner vacuum and turns dust on into a vacuum and the day is saved and everyone's happy except for Brahead who's still like low-key mad because she's trash at moving furniture and yeah overall a solid episode I was a little bit confused because last week it made it seem like like Silver's deal was he only cared about treasure and not saving people and this week it was more like he was just not good at teamwork because he thought he could handle everything by himself so, I don't know, maybe they'll bring that up more in the following weeks, and, like, he did talk a little bit about, like, to himself, like, what happened with Cristelia, and he does feel guilt over it. So, I'm, I do hope they dive more into that, because that was a little bit mixed messaging, but I liked the way they kind of came about him joining the team and working with people more, and that it was kind of just, he was shouldering all the responsibility on himself, and that he thought that he could do everything by himself, and just asking for help, I thought it was a nice development. Another nice showcase of, like, why Juru is a good leader because he has insight into individual characters. I've said this before, like most other loud Sentai Reds would say stuff like, Toothpaste is a hope of potatoes! And they're like, that's why he's leader. I'm like, he just said nothing! He just shrieked nothing into your face and he's your leader. I really appreciate that Juru is actually showing, despite being kind of the more eccentric Red, why he's good for the team instead of just shrieking word salad into our faces. But overall, another solid episode. I appreciated that we're still slow burning his mecha, and we just basically devoted this episode to Dust On, and it was overall very solid. I would give it an 8. Looking forward to next week and eventually get into the debut of his mecha, but what did you guys think of the episode? Let me know in the comments as always. Until next time, if you like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell so you can get notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing.